So after Ibrahim alayhi salam's death and Lut alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam Ishaq alayhi salam the brother of Ismail lived on a little bit more Ishaq alayhi salam married a woman by the name of Rachel who was the mother of Yaqub Yaqub is the son of Ishaq. Yaqub's name in biblical terms, they say Jacob. And Yaqub in the Hebrew language means the man who strives in the name of God. It also means a man of God. Yaqub later on was given the name Israel. Yaqub alayhi salam grew up being raised by his father Ishaq. And he had a brother named Isu. And Isu, his brother, was a shepherd, redhead, and he was rough. And Yaqub alayhi salam grew up married a woman by the name of Rebecca. Again, these are names taken from the Torah. He married another wife, a second wife as well in his lifetime named Leah. And he had two concubines. A concubine in those days was normal. Everywhere in the world they practiced this. Where if there was a war and women were left out of that war, they had no place to go. They had to be looked after in a certain way. You can either marry them or you can take them as concubines. So they're almost like a wife and they're not a slave, a little bit below the wife, so they don't inherit. My brothers and sisters, he had two of them. From these four women came all of his children. From the first one, Rebecca, came I think five or six of his children. And from Leah came Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet Joseph, and his brother Binyamin, also named Benjamin. And from his other two, the concubines, came the rest of his children. He had twelve sons and one daughter. His daughter's name was Dana. I'm talking, talking according to biblical terms. But Yusuf alayhi salam is the only name we know of that is in the Quran and in our Sunnah, who is the Messenger and Prophet of Allah. And Yaqub alayhi salam, from him came all the children of Israel. They are still the people till today who carry that bloodline. They are the Jews that are known today. But the bloodline of the twelve are still known till today. They are the Jews. That's why they say Judaism is not really a religion. Some of the Jews will tell you that. It's more of an inherited bloodline. So Yaqub salam is Israel. And all those who came after him, the Jews of today, are called the children of Yaqub, children of Israel. We honor and respect Prophet Yaqub as the Messenger of Allah, among the highest and most respected. He is also called by our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Abu al-Anbiya, the patriarch of all the prophets, the, the father of all the prophets. The Jews, they, they consider these four men, Ibrahim, Ishaq, Yaqub and Yusuf, as the patriarchs of all mankind. To us, Ibrahim is the father of the Prophet. Because from him came all the Prophets and Messengers right up to Muhammad Muhammad is also from the bloodline of Ibrahim but from the side of Ismail, like two branches. But from the branch of his heart came prophets after prophets after prophets after prophets after prophets all the way down to Isa alayhi salam and Yahya and Zakaria and other prophets. So Yaqub alayhi salam came from him the 12 sons. In the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges these 12 tribes. Yaqub alayhi salam grew up 
with the same belief and the same message as all the prophets that were before him. So Yaqub alayhi salam, he grew up and became an old man, wise, who Allah endured with intense knowledge. And they lived somewhere in the east of Egypt. And he gave da'wah to all the people there. People followed Ya'qub alayhi salam's religion, which Allah came with and gave him. And he was quite successful. The problem in the time of Ya'qub alayhi salam was not really with his people as much as it was with his own sons. This was a family feud, a family issue. Ya'qub alayhi salam loved all of his children. He did not show any favoritism between any of his children. All of them, including his daughter. They were all equally treated well. So all of his children could not point out any fault in the way Yaqub treated his children. But there was one problem. They felt that their father Yaqub seems to love Yusuf in particular more than them. And that is the only thing which you are not judged for. Allah does not judge you on your feelings and who you love more than another. He judges us on how we treat him. Add to that, Yusuf alayhi salam was a prophet and a messenger. Yaqub alayhi salam knew this. So he had the right to be loved more than any of them, regardless of him being his son or not. Yaqub alayhi salam, his qualities and values were amazing. And his treatments to his children were amazing. And Yusuf alayhi salam had these qualities too. So how could Yaqub not love Yusuf more than all of them? None of them shared the qualities and values that Yusuf has. He was a man of God. And as a result, unfortunately, the ten brothers, not Binyamin, not the eleventh one, the ten brothers who came from the other mothers, the stepbrothers, they developed a very deep jealousy just because of that from Yusuf. And that jealousy intensified as they grew older. The brothers grew toxic, but they hid it and they used to talk amongst each other. They developed a gang. We're going to gang against this little... Why? Why is he more beloved to our father than us? And we are a larger, stronger group that supports our dad and the family. We carry the bloodline more than his. You know, we came from the first mother. We are more in number. We're older, we've got the strength, we've been working and protecting our dad. Why should our, this young boy here, who's seven or eight years old, get more love than us? That's how they took it. And so the story of Yusuf comes to light. Alif <laughs> These are the clear signs and verses. We have sent it down as a Quran in the Arabic language, in the hope that you may understand and comprehend and think. We shall narrate to you the best of stories while before it and you have never known anything about it, nothing, and it's true. Behold, when Yusuf salam said to his father, Yaqub, O oh father, I have seen in my dream eleven planets and the sun and the moon together bowing to me. His father said to him, Son, do not tell your dream to your brothers. Because if you do, the shaitan will give them ideas to plot and plan against you a terrible plot. What does this tell us? It tells us that Yaqub knew from his wisdom and his experience in life how to tell the character of a people. He knew that his sons were jealous of Yusuf, his son, and that they were intending something horrible if they knew about this. If they knew that he saw this wonderful dream, then they will probably think that he has some kind of special qualities because they used to believe. They, they were believers. His brothers were believers. They knew the prophets. They knew the prophets could see dreams like this. 
So they were knowledgeable scholars, his brothers. They weren't simple people. But the problem was their jealousy. If you were to tell them, they're going to plot against you to get rid of you. And look, Yaqub put the fault on the shaitan rather than his sons. Because he says, evil can creep into any good person. And he still assumed well of his sons. Like he said, look, they've got good in them. But sometimes the shaitan can come to them and make them go astray for a little while. So what happened? Yusuf kept it a secret. And he didn't know its actual meaning yet.